Uh, welcome to this video. Today, so today we'll be looking at the cat. We'll be starting the cancer series and looking at cancer. So today we'll be focusing on cancer types, treatment, and diagnosis. What is cancer? Cancer is a disease in which some of the body cells grow uncont uncontrollably and spread to other parts of the body. This refers to any of the diseases characterized by development of abnormal cells that divide uncontrollably. This can infiltrate and destroy normal body tissue. It can start almost anywhere in the human body, which is made up of trillions of cells. Normally, human cells grow and multiply through a process called cell division to form new cells and the body needs them. When cells grow old or become damaged, they die and new cells take their, take their place, usually through apoptosis, programmed cell death. On the slide here, you can see the cancerous cells compared to the normal cells, how they've invaded and they were just spreading through into a different layer of tissue, etc. And the shape is different as well and the size, etc. That's just an example of what it will look like a cancerous cell. Difference between a normal cell and a cancer cell. So normally cells follow instructions are provided by genes. Normal cells divide and multiply in a controlled manner, and cancer cells multiply uncontrollably. These normal cells are programmed to die in a process known as apoptosis. Cancer cells ignore these directions. Normal cells for all solid organs stay put, whereas all cancer cells are able to move around. Normal cells don't grow as fast as cancer cells. How does cancer start in your body? Cancer starts when a gene or several genes mutate and create cancer cells. These cells can create cancer clusters or tumours. Cancer cells can then break away from tumours using your lymphatic system or bloodstream to travel to other areas of your body. For example, a tumour in your breast may spread to your lungs, making it hard for you to breathe. In some types of blood cancer, abnormal cells in your bone marrow make abnormal blood cells that multiply uncontrollably. Eventually, the abnormal cells crowd out the normal blood. Here's a table here describing the differences between benign tumours and malignant tumours. If anyone wants to have a look at this side, there's quite a lot of them here, but just other stuff is involved, such as bleeding, no bleeding, if it comes back, does it come back, whether it moves, whether it doesn't move, whether it stays, whether it has a regular surface, not, not a regular surface. Blood cells. So to recap, uncontrolled cell growth, invasion or destruction, metastasis, which is defined as a movement from one area to another, the cancer cells and to distinguishing between benign and malignant disease. Tumor formation here, the difference between normal cells and cancer cells. So normal cells they produce exactly stick together in correct place, self-destructive, damaged and mature specialised. Cancer cells continually reproduce, they fail to obey other cell signals, they don't stick together and remain immature. So in the tumour formation there's uncontrolled reproduction, loss of damage to genes, failure of pre-programmed apoptosis, which is cell death. Cell signals are ignored, the genes are switched on, and there's a lack of normal adhesion, which is a loss of cell surface proteins. There are types of cancer genes as well, such as oncogenes, tumour suppressor genes, and DNA repair genes. Oncogenes promote cell replications, and one example is RAS. Tumour suppressor genes stop cell division, and this is like P53 and BRAC1, BRAC1, which is involved in breast cancer, and DNA repair genes, which are involved in ionising radiation and oxidative damage. So what is a tumour marker? A tumour marker is a substance related to the presence or progress of, of the tumour. It, it is secreted. So the serum tumour markers such as alpha fetoprotein, CEA and PSA. Tissue, cell surface such as leukaemia markers, intercellular such as steroid receptors, gene expressing such as EGF, EGFR, epidermal growth factor receptor, tyrosine kinase, and tumour derived from the tumour itself such as the Philadelphia chromosome. The ideal serum tumour marker should be detectable only in malignancy, specific for the site and type of malignancy, correlate with the tumour burden, change rapidly if change in tumour size, but unfortunately there is no marker that fulfils these criteria. There are various disadvantages to this, such as they are non-specific for malignancy, rarely increase in early malignancy, there is no marker which is absolutely organ specific, and a negative marker does not exclude malignancy. So here are some symptoms of cancer, such as unexplained weight loss, chronic tiredness, persistent pain, fever, skin changes, particularly moles that change shape, size or new moles, bruising or bleeding more easily, lumps or bumps under your skin, difficulty breathing and difficulty swallowing. So let's have a look at a type of cancer, right? Your bladder cancer, so the bladder, sometimes called urinary bladder, is a balloon-shaped organ in your lower abdomen. Near the pelvis, it stores urine from the kidneys until it's passed through the body. I can see on the slide there, there are some symptoms of blood, bladder cancer. 
Because of blood in the urine, having a urinate often, pain or urinating, back pain and pelvic pain. So how does this occur? This occurs via smoking, having a history of fam fam family history of bladder cancer, having certain gene mutations, being exposed to too much workplace chemicals, such as dyes, metals, petroleum products, types of chemotherapy drugs, drinking well water, which is contaminated with arsenic, taking a Chinese herb, which you can see, Aristocia fanchi, and having chronic urinary tract infections, including those caused by schistosoma, hematobium. So let's have a look at breast cancer. Cells in the breast go out of control. There are different types of breast cancer. The kind of breast cancer depends on which cells in the breast turn into cancer. Most breast cancers begin in the ducts or lobules. Breast cancer can spread outside the breast through blood vessels and lymph vessels. When breast cancer spreads to other parts of the body, it is said to metastasize. There are two types of breast cancer, invasive ductal carcinoma and invasive lobular carcinoma. So in the invasive ductal carcinoma, the cancer cells begin in the ducts and then grow outside the ducts to other parts of the breast tissue. And these invasive cancer cells can also spread or metastasize to other parts of the body. In invasive lobular carcinoma, cancer cells in the lobules are then spread from the lobules to the breast tissues that are close by. And these invasive cancer cells can also spread to other parts of the body. So here are the symptoms of breast cancer. Lumps, thickening, irritation, redness, pulling in the area, discharge, changes size of shape. So cervical cancer is the growth of abnormal cells in the lining of the cervix. The most common cervical cancer is known as squamous cell carcinoma, which accounts for 70% of cases. The other one is adenocarcinoma, which is less common and difficult to diagnose because it starts higher in the cervix. So Human papillovirus is so common that most people get it at some point in their lives. It usually causes no symptoms, so you can't tell you have it. For most people, it will go away on its own. However, if it doesn't, at a time, it might cause cervical cancer. If you have HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, or another condition, this makes it hard for your body to fight off health problems. And how? Smoking. Collateral cancer is a disease in which cells in the colon or rectum grow out of control. It's sometimes known as colon cancer. So the colon is a large intestine or large bowel. Sometimes abnormal growths called polyps form in the colon or rectum. Over time, some polyps may turn into cancer. Screening tests can find polyps that can be removed before turning into cancer. And screening also helps find colorectal cancer in an early stage when treatment works best. So symptoms there, change in bowel habits, blood in your stool, Diarrhea, constipation, abdominal pain, aches, weight loss, and you have no idea why. Gynecological cancer, any cancer that starts in women's reproductive organs. A cancer is always named for the part of the body where it starts. It begins with different places on a woman's pelvis, which is the area below the stomach and in between the hip bones. There are different types, such as cervical cancer, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, vaginal cancer, and vulval cancer. So if you see in the slide here, these are, these are locations that are occurs in. And here are the symptoms of it. Abnormal bleeding, feeling too full, pelvic pain, more of frequent need to urinate, itching, burning pain. Now looking at head and neck cancer. So these occur in the sinuses, the space around the nose and inside the skull, inside behind the nose, in the mouth until they turn the drums in the roof of the mouth, in the back of the mouth, in the throat, the pharynx, and nasal, nasal pharynx, oral pharynx and hypopharynx, and the larynx, also known as your voice spots, on the lips, although cancer on the lips is a type of skin cancer, in the glands that make saliva for the mouth, but those are relatively layer. So here are the symptoms. White or red sore, swelling in the jaw, unusual bleeding, lumps, probably dentures, trouble ble breathing or speaking, lumps or thickening, chewing or swallowing, food trouble, feeling that something is caught in the throat, pain in the throat that don't want to go away, or pain or ringing in the ears. There's more as well. Pain when swallowing, ear pain, uh, blocked sinuses, sinus infections that do not respond to treatment with antibiotics, nose bleeds, headaches, pain and swelling in the eyes, pain in the upper teeth, and problem with dentures. Moving on to kidney cancer, so the renal pelvis is the centre of the kidney and is responsible for collecting the urine and feeding it into the ureters, two tubes that connect the kidney with the bladder. The bladder holds the urine until it is peed out. When cancer starts, the kidney is called kidney and renal pelvis cancer. It can also be known as renal cell cancer, which is the most common type. Here are the symptoms, blood in your urine, lumps or swelling in the kidney area, lower back pain, feeling tired, fever, don't feel hungry, losing weight for no reason, 
blockage of your bowels and general feeling of poor health. Look at liver cancer. So liver is involved in storing nutrients and removing waste products and worn out cells from the blood, filtering and processing chemicals in food, alcohol, medications, and it produces bile, which is a solution that helps digest fats and eliminate waste products. When cancer starts in the liver, it's called liver cancer. Symptoms include discomfort in upper abdomen on the right side, a swollen abdomen, hard lumps, pain near the right shoulder, and blade, jaundice, which is the yellowing of the skin and whites of the eyes, easy, easy bruising or bleeding, unusual tiredness, nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite and weight loss. With regards to lung cancer, this begins in the lungs and may spread to lymph nodes or other organs in the body and it can also spread, cancer from other organs can also spread to the lungs. When cancer cells spread from one organ to another, they are called metastases. Lung cancer is usually grouped into two types, small cell and non-smell and this includes, and this includes adenocarcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. These types of lung cancer grow differently and are treated differently. Non-small cell lung cancer is more common than small cell lung cancer. Symptoms include coughing that doesn't go away, chest pain, shortness of breath, wheezing, coughing up blood, feeling very tired all the time, weight loss of no known cause. Skin cancer. The skin is the body's largest organ. It has several layers, but the two main layers are the epidermis, the upper layer, and the dermis, the lower inner layer. Skin cancer begins in the epidermis, which is made up of three types of cells. Squamous cell, basal cells, and melanocytes. Squamous cells are thin, flat cells that form the top layer of the epidermis. Basal cells are round cells that are under the squamous cells, and melanocytes are cells that make melanin and are found in the lower part of the epidermis. Melanin is a pigment that gives skin its colour. When skin is exposed to the sun, melanocytes make more pigment and cause the skin to get darken. Symptoms of skin cancer include the five warning signs, the ABCDs. So asymmetrical, does the mole or spot have an irregular shape of two parts that look very different? The border, is the border irregular or jagged? The colour, is the colour uneven? Diameter, is the mole or spot larger than the size of a pea? Evolving, has the mole or spot changed in the past few weeks or months? Now looking at blood tests for cancers, these include complete blood count, a complete blood count which measures and blunts your blood cells, your tumour markers which are substances that cancer cells release or that your normal cells release in response to cancer cells, blood protein tests, so uh, healthcare providers use a process called electrophoresis to measure immunoglobulins, your immune system reacts to certain cancers by releasing immunoglobulins and circulating tumour cell tests, so cancer tumours can shed cells. So tracking these tumour cells helps them monitor cancer activity. Imaging tests are also available, such as CT scans, X-rays, PET scans, ultrasounds, magnetic resonance imaging, and iodine meta benzyl guanidine tests, which helps detect cancers and, and carinoid tumours and neuroblastoma. So all these tests are used to check the structure and create images of your bones, soft tissues, etc., and organs. Biopsies can also be undertaken, so a needle biopsy which uses a thin hollow needle and syringe to extract cells, fluid or tissue from suspicious lumps. Skin biopsy, bone, bio, bone marrow biopsy, or an endoscopic or laparoscopic biopsy to see the inside of your body. It's a incisional, incisional biopsy where a surgeon cuts into your body and either the tumour is removed fully or part of the tumour is removed. And if it's fully removed, it's incisional. If it's in, uh, partly removed, it's incisional to test or treat it. And a perioperative biopsy, which is also known as a frozen section biopsy, this is done while you're having another procedure, the tissue will be removed and tested right away. So how is the cancer stage determined? T and M. So T stands for primary tumour, N stands for lymph nodes and indicates whether a tumour is spread to your lymph nodes, and M stands for metastasis, when cancer spreads. So what are the four stages? We have four stages, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. In stage 1, the cancer is localised to a small area and hasn't spread to lymph nodes or other tissues. In stage 2, the cancer is grown but it hasn't spread. In stage 3, the cancer is grown larger and possibly spread to lymph nodes or other tissues. In stage 4, the cancer is spread to other organs or areas of your body. This stage is also referred to as metastasic or advanced cancer. Though 1 stages, 1 through 4, are the most common, there is also a stage 0. This earliest phase describes cancer that still localised to the area which it started. Cancers that are still in stage 0 are usually treatable and are considered precancerous. Management and treatment. So, chemotherapy is used and is most common. It uses powerful drugs to destroy cancer cells. 
You can receive chemotherapy in fit pill form intravenously through a needle into the vein. Radiation therapy, which kills cancer cells with high doses of radiation. Surgery, where cancerous tumours that haven't spread may be removed with surgery. And this treatment combines surgery with chemotherapy or radiation to shrink, to shrink a tumour before surgery or to kill cancer cells that may remain after surgery. You can also have hormone therapy, therapy biological response modifier therapy, immunotherapy for cancer, targeted therapy for cancer, and bone marrow transplant. So if you look at the slide here, you can see the different reasons why you would use that. Just to pick up on a few, biological response modifier stimulates your immune system to help fight it. Immunotherapy also does the same thing. Targeted therapy tar targets genetic changes or mutations to turn healthy cells that, that turn healthy cells into cancer cells. Bone marrow transplants re replace damaged stem cells of healthy ones and auto so there's two types. Autologous transplantation which uses healthy supply of stem cells and allogeneic transplantation which uses stem cells donated by another person. So what are the side effects of cancer treatment? Anemia, nausea and vomiting, fatigue and pain. So what is the diagnosis? So the diagnosis, so the objective is, is to make diagnosis in patients with symptoms and confirm your clinical findings of radiology. The limitation is this, is you have poor specificity and sensitivity on most markers. A negative result does not exclude a tumour. The reality is, is there is only a few good markers, such as HCG or calcitonin. <coughs> Pestilized treatments can, under, can also be undertaken, such as immunotherapies, such as monoclonal antibodies, immune system checkpoints, cancer vaccines, adoptive T-cell therapy. Markers are important in clinical trials for difficult, but are difficult for treat to cancer. Chemotherapy agents are also used, such as cisplatinum, which is a bifunctional alkylating agent which inhibits DNA synthesis, bleomycin, which is antibiotic and mediates oxidative deg degradation of RNA, etopside, which is glyco glycoside, which is may apple root, and inhibits chromosome dynamics. And the final few ones are vincristine, which is an alkaloid, periwinkle leaves, and it inhibits microtubules, elfamoside, which is an alkylating agent which disrupts DNA, and papillus. Paclitaxel, which is a taxi which inhibits mitosis. Quite a lot of video there and a lot of information to take in. Definitely look back over the slides and see if there's anything else you want to learn. This cancer series will continue with genetics of cancer and also cell cycle loss of control and what happens when the cell cycle results in cancer. Thank you very much for tuning in today.